is this worth it doing these mods is it worth it or should you just get used to using a regular playstation 5 controller i would say hey welcome back to gears and tech now you may have seen one of our other videos where we were making our playstation 5 elite controller now in that video i show you how i take a brand new factory PlayStation 5 DualSense controller and turn it into this. Now this is what I'm calling a PlayStation 5 Elite controller. What makes it elite? Hey, before I get too far into this video, if you are liking this content, don't forget to smash the like button down below and hit the subscribe button so you know when we're releasing our next fresh new content. Now back to the video. First thing I did was added some back buttons. These are typical extreme rate rise remap back buttons. You can get those on Amazon. I do have links in the description for everything that I've put onto this controller so you can build your own controller as well. So it has programmable back buttons that are programmable to any of the face buttons and any of the trigger buttons. I did not install the solder option, which allows me to program to the R3 or L3. And I think it also stops me from mapping this button here, which is no big deal. I've never needed to map that to a back button. Anyway, I've also added clicky face triggers and I'll show you. You can see that's the throw of this trigger. So it doesn't, it, it stops. And then same with the top, they're just clicky. You can hear them. And that's the same for both. All four of these are clicky triggers. I also added clicky face buttons. These buttons here and these buttons here so that they're more clicky. So they're less throw and more click. And if you watched that video, you already noticed something's a little bit different right here in the thumbsticks. And that's because I had these. These are aluminum or aluminum, as my friends across the pond would say it. And they feel really great. When you pick them up, they've got a lot of weight to them. They feel awesome. When you install them, they look awesome. And I'll show you some pictures real quick of what this controller looks like with these really cool brass colored thumbsticks. I love the look of the controller with the brass thumbsticks. The problem I ran into is this spot right here is just, it's too slippery. And my thumbs, when they were on it, they were sliding around. And so I was finding that I had to push harder in order to get engagement on my thumbs and actually slide it around. And I didn't like it. It's something that you could probably get used to, but I really wanted to get back to these rubber thumbsticks, which I did. You'll notice my thumbsticks are different heights. That's because I bought an extreme rate adjustable thumbstick. So I it comes with this little pad here. And the nice thing is these pop right off. So the thumbstick is still attached internally, but if I wanted to, I could put both of them really tall like that. I don't think there's any value in that. They've got different heads. So you can see these have like a mushroom head to them and these still have that concave. The kit comes with two that are these low profile ones like this, which you've already seen that I have on this side. It comes with two low profile ones with this smooth mushroom top. And it comes with two of these longer ones, but they're different. So you've got one that's like this and one that has this mushroom top on it like that. As I understand it, the reason why you want one taller than the other, I'm not sure I subscribe to the theory, but the theory sounds good. In a first person shooter game, typically this is the control stick that you move around for looking up and down and left and right. This one, you're just running, you know, running forward, running backward, running left and running right. When you are moving as far as forward, backward, left and right, you don't need a lot of precision. Does anyone really creep forward? I mean, I guess that's the question. Does anyone like sit there and like go a little bit slowly forward or a little bit slowly backwards? You're either going full speed ahead backwards, full speed ahead forward or left and right. And so for that reason, the short one's okay. But you do have more precision with looking around. And by having this here, the distance that this travels from center to all the way over is greater because I've come up higher. Now there's math and geometry and everything involved with this. Just know that this goes over that way a long way and it goes over this way a long way. It goes up 
and down a long way. It moves a longer distance. The reason that's advantageous is because if I just need to move over there, I can move just a little bit or I can move hard and move faster and further. This gives you more control in the sense that it gets you closer to the precision that a mouse and keyboard would give you except on a controller. I personally do subscribe to that theory. I played with this. So I actually played with this first to test it. I ran a couple nights with the metal thumbsticks and I realized they were not for me. And I was looking at switching back to the rubber regular thumbsticks, but I really wanted the adjustability of this. And this is a game changer once you get used to it. Your thumbs are at different heights, which you need to get used to. So it's, it's a learning curve, but once you've learned it, I don't think you could ever go back. So first off, the metal thumbsticks, while they look cool, I don't think they're great for somebody who wants to do like competitive gaming where every movement matters. You do need that rubber grip. These um, extreme rate thumbsticks, they actually are sold as for PlayStation 4. They fit on the PlayStation 5 just fine. Uh, it looks like the ones for the Xbox uh, work exactly the same. So if you find a different color you like, these do come in different colors. And again, I'll have a link for those in the description. I went with the gold base, the black tops, just because I like the black on gold look. It's more subtle. The thumbsticks, I'm loving them. I would give these thumbsticks a 10 out of 10 ranking for how great they work and how much it's improved in the few times that I've played with it like this, how much it's improved really everything. Next, the clicky face buttons. I have a confession to make. I did put the clicky face buttons in and then I took them right back out again. When I opened the controller up to take these metal thumbsticks out, I knew I would also be taking the clicky face buttons out. The throw of the buttons on the regular PlayStation 5 controller is the same or close enough to the same as the clicky buttons to make no real difference. These do have a little bit of mush to them, but I found that even though the switch clicks, it wasn't actually engaging. And so in the games that I was playing, I'm playing Call of Duty, and when I'm going to pick stuff up and I'm pushing the square button to pick things up, I was mispicking things. When I was going to replate by pressing triangle, I wasn't plating. I'd push it and he wouldn't plate. I'd push it and he wouldn't plate. It wasn't until I pushed it and held it for at least an uncomfortably long amount of time did this button register that I was pushing the triangle button and it then re started to plate. So I got rid of this. I went back to the regular PlayStation buttons and I've been enjoying it just fine like that. I've stopped misplating. I've stopped mispicking things up. So it solved all of those problems. On a scale of one to 10 for the clicky face buttons, I'm gonna give them a one. In theory, they are good. These ones didn't work good at all. I'm sending them back because I don't know if they're defective or if that is everyone's experience, but it's not worth it. You, these buttons click just fine and you don't gain a whole lot with those. So I'm leaving that out. The next thing, the clicky front buttons. There was a learning curve with the clicky front buttons as well. I've got my controls switched around a little bit so that I'm called, it's called bumper ping. So my L1 button is the button to mark people. And if you're not using it as bumper ping, in most of the current gen COD games, Call of Duty games, these are your grenades and your secondaries. What I found myself doing is I frequently switch my grip up. I'll use my fingers like this, to aim and shoot ultimately, right? But if I know I'm getting into the thick of things, I will switch to this finger to aim and then have this finger free to trigger the L1 button. Typically I keep this one still here. I don't get two up here. That's just, I don't know, that's just how I do it. What I found was the old one that was not a clicky, I could hold this and then switch to this and it would stay zoomed in. It would stay ADS the whole time. Whereas now because this is so clicky, it's either on or it's not. So whenever I let go to switch, it would take me back out of ADS. It would affect my aiming a little bit and then put me back in. And there's an animation associated with that. So I've had to get used to keeping my controller in the same configuration all the time or accept that I'm going to let go of aiming in 
and then re amen. It's not the end of the world. Really, it's not. That's just my problem more than anything. What I do notice is I am much faster on the draw now. And if you've been watching my Twitch stream, you will have seen the last few games that I've been playing have been with this controller. And you will notice that I'm actually getting more kills per game than I was prior to using this controller. I believe that that's because my reaction time is quicker so I can turn and pull the trigger and there's less distance for it to go. So that makes the difference between getting the first shot off or being one shot behind the guy. Because frequently I would get the final shot on him when I had just enough health where I would, if I took one more hit, I would have been the one down. And that made all the difference. If you find that you're losing gunfights frequently, then these are the things that you want to get. On a scale of one to 10, there are definitely a 10. I recommend them for anyone. They make a big difference. It's a very noticeable difference. And I can't imagine not having those anymore. That leads me to the final edition, which is this back button, the programmable back buttons. The install of these is not difficult. In fact, the install of all of this stuff is not difficult. It's tedious. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. You have to be brave because you have to take this whole controller apart in order to get to the clicky face buttons. It went back together just fine. And as long as you follow that other video, you'll see all of the steps and it's not a big deal. This part is actually one of the easier parts to install over the whole thing. It is complicated, but still easy. The things that I like about it is the ease of install is pretty good. The functionality is good. It's got a button here so you can program on the fly. You can map to any button you want uh, on the fly. So if you decide, well, that's not the setup for me in the middle of the game, you can change the mapping. So it's not a big deal. You don't have to leave. You don't have to plug this into a computer. You don't have to do anything like that. Some complaints that I have about it. Number one is they're very clicky which is good, but they don't require a lot of force to click. So I actually, while I was holding it, when I just rested my finger on here, I was finding that I was accidentally clicking. The other thing is, and it could be a grip issue, I really don't like the shape of the PlayStation 5 controller, especially in here and the side right here. If you compare it to a PlayStation 4 controller, there's a little bit of a ball right here that just goes into my hand and locks it in place. Whereas these, my hand tends to want to slip out of. I don't really like that. And because of that, I've had to switch my grip up. And when I switch my grip, I find that this finger ends up resting up here, which means I've got no finger left to hit that button over here. So I got to switch my grip to get that one, but then that pushes me up over here too far. So I find I have to bring this finger off of here, which I use for stabilizing and bring it down here so that I can trigger this. On this side, it's not a big deal. I've always held it like this anyway. With these back buttons, I've really only got one back button because this one, I'm having a hard time figuring out a grip that I like. I suppose I could go like this, but it, it just feels too loose. I have too many hands on too many buttons, and then I end up pushing buttons that I don't want to. Ideally, there would be longer buttons on here that bring them down this side a little bit more so that I can get my finger in here on that, right in this space here. I do have a 3D printer. I'm gonna look at popping this out, scanning this, and seeing if I can design an extension on here that just brings it down a little further so I can get more options for which fingers are gonna trigger it. And I think that'll help a lot. This is the main thing that I wanted but I find that the clicky triggers and the thumbsticks are the thing that I'm liking the most. I would score this, oh, it's so tough. I'm gonna score it an eight out of 10. And the reason for the eight is simply because the buttons are too easy to push, so you accidentally trigger it, and these wings are not long enough for my liking. I would like different wing options that I can buy, and then all my problems go away, my complaints go away. I would bump this up to a nine or 10 easily if those two things were solved. Overall though, is this worth it? doing these mods, is it worth it? Or should you just get used to using a regular PlayStation 5 controller? I would say yes, it's worth it. And part of that reason is you gotta keep in mind, you're playing against cross-gen is enabled. So you're playing against PC players, you're playing against Xbox players, 
you're playing against PlayStation 4 players. All of those have special controllers, elite controllers, pro controllers. You can get a scuff controller on your PlayStation 4 that has the back buttons, has four of them. You can have adjustable thumbsticks, you can have adjustable hair triggers. All of those things are already available on a third party controller, which is fully legal to use on a PlayStation 4. That controller is also available on your Xbox. On the computer, they can be using a controller, any controller they want. So they could be using those controllers or they could be using keyboard and mouse. So the PlayStation 5 players are really at a disadvantage because the only controller you get is a factory DualSense controller, at least right now. Now I did cover in other videos that there are ways around that to use your Elite controllers, but I also covered in a different video how that is now being patched out of new games. So you're going to be stuck using one of these if you've got a PlayStation 5. I've definitely noticed the competitive advantage that I have by doing all of these modifications to my controller. I don't regret it at all. Overall, this controller is a solid nine out of 10 now. It took it from a six to a nine, which is impressive. All of the features are, are perfect. That about wraps up everything that I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos over here. We do have a lot of great content in our back library. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.